Elite Facts presents 10 Hilarious Movie Cameos 10. Bill Murray, Zombieland, 2009 We all know the phrase, when life gives you lemons, you make lemonade, right? Well, believe it or not, that's Bill Murray's philosophy, outlined in his cameo from 2009's Zombieland. Covered in makeup so he won't be taken for a human by zombies, Murray spends time in his mansion playing golf and reenacting scenes from Ghostbusters as his character Dr. Peter Venkman before he's mistaken for a zombie by Jesse Eisenberg who accidentally shoots him. The filmmakers were confident at the time that Murray would decline the role, so they decided not to approach him, instead offering the role to Matthew McConaughey, hoping things would be all right, all right, all right. It was only when veteran actor and star of the movie Woody Harrelson pitched the idea to Murray that he fell in love with it and decided to collaborate with writers to add many more elements of humor to his scenes. Seeing the cast of Zombieland so starstruck by him on screen creates a layer of fandom that almost every audience member can relate to. 9. Martin Sheen Hot Shots Part 2, 1993 it's Sheen vs. Sheen in this memorable moment from the 1993 spoof Hot Shots Part 2. During a scene where he's drifting down the river on a boat, a very Rambo-inspired Charlie Sheen passes his father, Martin Sheen, still in character as Captain Benjamin L. Willard from the classic movie Apocalypse Now on another boat. The father and son duo are no strangers to working together, having both starred in 1987's majorly successful Wall Street. The younger Sheen is shown writing in his journal, with a voiceover narrating what he's writing. As the boats near one another, he's interrupted by someone else's journal thoughts, his father's. Without missing a beat, the two rise almost simultaneously, pointing and yelling, I loved you in Wall Street, in unison as they pass by. As if nothing had occurred, they both transition back into their characters and carry on with their separate journeys. While the scene is short, its appearance and humor make it one of the most memorable movie cameos ever. 8. Ben Stiller, Vince Vaughn, Luke Wilson, and Tim Robbins, Anchorman, 2004 The scene begins with the evening news team, fronted by Vince Vaughn, riding in on bikes, dinging their bells and circling Ron's Channel 4 news team. It gets more intense from there, and with the two groups ready to trade blows, several news teams appear out of nowhere to come at Burgundy and his team. The Channel 2 news team, fronted by Luke Wilson, the public news team, fronted by Tim Robbins, and the Spanish language news, fronted by Ben Stiller, each with their own set of insane weapons they've inexplicably found. During the fight, you expect the entire scene to be taken up by Wilhelm screams and over-the-top punches, but it somehow ends up more brilliant and ridiculous than in your wildest dreams. 7. Bob Barker, Happy Gilmore, 1996 Bob Barker, the host of The Price is Right from 1972 until 2007, proves that he's not to be messed with, as things get heated with Adam Sandler in 1996's Happy Gilmore. After Gilmore's superior rise to professional golf fame, he fails to impress while playing in a high-stakes tournament with his partner, you guessed it, Bob Barker. Barker is at his sassiest when things begin to escalate on the green. Surprising Sandler with a killer left jab, he punches him square in the face before throwing him into a pond and beating him some more. As a little extra for his fans, Barker says to Sandler, Now you've had enough, bitch, before strutting away, victorious. Bob Barker's cameo helped boost ratings for The Price is Right, as well as earning Happy Gilmore an MTV Movie Award for Best Fight Scene. The scene was so well-loved that the pair were approached 19 years later by Comedy Central to reenact the fight, which was met with great acclaim. 6. Matt Damon, Eurotrip, 2004 Eurotrip may not be one of the better entries in the teen comedy category, but one appearance made it stand out from the rest, a cameo in the shape of Matt Damon. The actor's presence in this film was unexpected and even a little bizarre, but as the scene continued, it became an enjoyable comic moment and one of the highlights of the movie. Our hero, Scott, has recently been rejected by his high school sweetheart, Fiona. Feeling sad and lonely, Scott decides to attend a graduation party. A local band are on stage, fronted by a shaved head tattooed, pumped up and pierced male lead singer. During this time, the band performs their hit song, Scotty Doesn't Know. And while listening, Scott slowly notices that his relationship is actually the one being sung about, and that the Fiona in the song, who is having sex in the back of a van on Sundays, is indeed his high school sweetheart. The driver of that sex van is, of course, an almost unrecognizable Matt Damon. 
Damon sings about all the things Scotty doesn't know before bizarrely making out with Fiona on stage, an experience actress Kristen Kreek described as her most awkward on-screen kiss to date. 5. John Hurt, Chuck Jones parody, Spaceballs, 1987. Eight years after John Hurt depicted cinema's greatest birth scene in 1979's Alien, he returned to parody himself in 1987's Spaceballs. The scene was set, complete with Ripley and Parker lookalikes, in what looks more like an American diner than a spacecraft diner. As the scene progresses, John Hurt, clearly in pain, begins to relive his horrifying moments from the classic Alien film as he clutches his stomach in agony and falls onto the table. Seconds later, the alien bursts from his chest. Shocked at what just happened, Hurt looks at the alien and lets out a final gasp of words, oh no, not again. The cameo wasn't the only parody in the film, though. The other paid homage to Chuck Jones's 1955 animated short, One Froggy Evening. Leaving the warm innards of John Hurt, the alien pops on a straw hat and grabs a cane, ready to perform the infamous Hello My Baby routine. A couple of fairly hilarious moments from a fairly hilarious movie. 4. Channing Tatum, This Is The End, 2013 when we talk about cameos, it's near impossible to ignore Seth Rogen and Evan Goldberg's 2013 love child, This Is The End. It's a movie where every cast member plays a version of themselves, and it starts off at a party hosted by James Franco that's suddenly halted by the apocalypse. Most of the guest list, which includes the likes of Michael Cera, Kevin Hart, Paul Rudd, and Jason Segel, are seen mingling at the party but are killed off during the apocalypse, along with many other cameo guests. While there's a brilliant scene involving Rihanna quite viciously slapping a coked-out Michael Sierra across the face, the most memorable cameo is near the end of the movie. Danny McBride resurfaces looking like something from a Mad Max movie, and alongside him, attached to a leash, is Channing Tatum. Tatum, clad in a luchador mask and pretty much nothing else, scrambles around at McBride's feet like a dog. Tatum gets referenced to as the Gimp and was allegedly spotted wandering down the highway and now travels with McBride as his personal sex slave. 3. Will Ferrell, Wedding Crashers, 2005 This one is arguably the best of Ferrell's uncredited drive-by cameos. He only gets one scene in Wedding Crashers, but it's a memorable one. Ferrell plays Chaz Reinhold, once an accomplished and idolized wedding crasher who slowly becomes a funeral crasher. John, played by Owen Wilson, pays Chaz a visit after becoming estranged from his best friend Jeremy, played by Vince Vaughn, and his love interest Claire, played by Rachel McAdams. A confused but intrigued Owen Wilson looks on as Ferrell, clad in nothing but a dressing gown, jumps from topic to topic, telling him of how he rides his bicycle to funerals to seduce the mourners. Ferrell's charismatic style makes Chaz a very memorable character, giving out-of-context lines like, Dude died in a hang gliding accident. What an idiot! And, Hey mom, the meatloaf! We want it, now! Chaz is mentioned throughout the movie as the main teacher of the art of crashing weddings, but when the audience found out he was played by Ferrell, it couldn't have been any sweeter. 2. Neil Patrick Harris, Harold and Kumar Go to White Castle, 2004 it's hard to believe it was way back in 2004 when Harold and Kumar went to White Castle, but they didn't go alone. I'm sure we can all agree the real star of Harold and Kumar wasn't Harold or Kumar or even White Castle. It was former Doogie Howser MD actor Neil Patrick Harris, who portrayed an ecstasy-taking, coke-snorting, stripper-hungry version of himself. Harris's popular TV series, Doogie Howser MD, had been off the air for about a decade when Harold and Kumar rose to fame. But Harris was still best known to the American public as Doogie. Then, out of nowhere, the legacy of Doogie was burned to the ground in three short scenes. Harris doesn't appear for nearly an hour and only has a handful of lines, but that handful was enough to erase that image of the lamb coat-wearing doctor. It definitely helps that even when Harris isn't on screen, the lead characters are seen talking about him. If you thought White Castle would benefit the most from this film, you thought wrong. This is where Neil Patrick Harris, or the aptly abbreviated NPH, became a brand unto himself. The cameo worked out so well, in fact, that NPH landed his role on How I Met Your Mother immediately after this film was released. That's right, thanks to Harold and Kumar, Neil Patrick Harris is now a household name. And when was the last time you went to White Castle? 1. Tom Cruise, Tropic Thunder, 2008 
There's nothing quite like watching an instantly recognizable performer play with their image and go totally outside of their comfort zone. And for that, we see Tom Cruise at number one with his appearance as Les Grossman in 2008's Tropic Thunder, touted by many as the funniest character in the movie and the role that saved his career. With a various number of brief scenes, Cruz makes a lasting impression as Les Grossman, an incredibly intense, angry movie studio executive aiming to get the Vietnam War movie made from a distance. Sporting a fat suit, a bald cap, and some bizarrely large prosthetic hands, Cruz appears to bask in the idea of being totally unrecognizable and really lets loose on the screen, something we don't usually see from the veteran actor. Best known for more predictable and repetitive but successful roles like in the Mission Impossible series, only makes his character portrayal of Les Grossman that much more entertaining as we watch him annihilate a gang member over the phone, blackmail Matthew McConaughey, and even break into one of the best dance scenes on film in years. Thanks for watching another amazing video, folks. Subscribe for more from Elite Facts.